now, folks. There he is. He's back. And I think he just came back in just in time. All right. You sideways. There we go. Uh, is that you? <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna keep on share this. Call on the phone. Call oh. On. He's getting phone calls. Yeah. Not now. <laughs> Not now. When? Yeah. Boom. Boom. Pistol praise. Da, 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 bang, bang. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't know if that's gonna catch y'all, but if it is, it's hilarious. <laughs> That'll be funny. Okay. All right, we're good to go. And the screen is nice. Uh, it fits everybody. Yay! Uh, Lifeline Squad, how we doing it this evening? Um, Great. Amazing. Okay. Amazing. 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 We had some kickstarts taken off this morning. You know what I'm saying? Double dose. Yeah. We got uh, AG and Lamar out there tag teaming on some gospel. Yes. And then, um, we have Mark kicking it in on Sunday with a man, man, a freeing word. That was a freeing word. And mm -hmm. somebody, if you didn't catch it in the virtual world, go back to Sunday's message. And man, I, I forgot it's even on YouTube. Go back and catch that message. It was powerful. But between the kickstarts, Hallelujah. Sunday, the Hallelujah. previous Wednesday, the previous set, man, there's been a lot happening. So uh, yeah, I'm loving I'm loving the uh, flow, the, just the circular flow of God's word going back and forth. So it's wonderful. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm geeked up and I am charged for our next series we're moving into. And I was so tempted to kick it off tonight, but I think I got a hard, hold on, bro. Uh, save that until we start on Sunday because I was about ready to kick in on accountability. But uh, priority is still hitting hard. Good for you. Is that the blue face? <laughs> got, the boot face, got the boot face on priority uh so yeah uh so tonight we're gonna do a rewind because there were so many um different aspects that we talked about even the last time we talked we only touched on a percentage of them and i was planning on showing some slides but i'm gonna go ahead and we're just gonna jump off of what the focus points was and i'm uh, uh we're gonna look at those in detail because i think if we don't kind of do like a rewind on it some of them might get lost in a shuffle and when I went back and looked at them, I was like, wow, we did talk about like love and identity and all that being priority. I was like, oh, wow. So like going back through, we're going to kind of just jump through those and get as many as we can in in this hour because uh, uh, truthfully, it's so much that we can sit on with just like one or two of them. So hopefully we can get through as many as possible. So before we get started, uh, we must enter in prayer. So Jesus, we thank you. You are Hallelujah. glorious. You are yeah, triumphant. You. Lord, you're Hallelujah. everything that we ever needed. And Lord, you've shown yourself true, not only in the series, not only in the season, but Lord, eternally, that's who you are. Thank you for giving us exposure. Thank you for giving us a one-on-one -on -one relationship. Thank you for the downloads you've given us personally, the revelations from our walk with you and our conversations, Lord. And let us not only seek you out, let us put you above everything else that's important. Lord, we're learning that prioritizing you is worship in itself because we call you more valuable than yes. everything else. So Lord, let us press to be before you in every aspect. Let us look into the corners of our lives that we may not have imputed you into and give you access, Lord. Jesus. Look at the next door in our hearts. Look at the next door in our lives, Lord. Let us tear them down and allow you to walk freely in because you upgrade and make better. And ultimately, it's for your glory. We are living sacrifices. You're not looking for a piece. You're not looking for percentages, Lord. You're looking for the 100%. You're looking for all of us. So let us do so by giving over unto you willingly so you can have the greatest output possible. So, Lord, we love you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, um, and y'all know for me, priorities kicking in big, big, especially with the book I'm reading with uh, the Huddle Group out of out of Oakland with Elder Claiborne. We're reading this book called um, uh, the uh, Spiritual uh, Supernatural Royalty, and it's speaking about just the outlooks that you can have that are less than what God has assigned for you. And I was reading a chapter last night, and it was like really, it really hit me strong. I was like, whoa, I didn't even see it like that. So um, the authors, Chris Valentin and um, Bill Johnson, and in the book, he's highlighting about the uh, honor, honoring, right? And he said that the woman who broke the alabaster box over Jesus honored him, right? 
So much so that Jesus said, hey, you're going to be remembered. Wherever the gospel's taught, you're, you're, we remember you, right? Remember so what yes. you did in honor. Now, the disciples have rocked with Jesus for three years, right? They've been around him. They've seen miracles. They've seen how he behaved, how he carried himself, right? And so their first thing was indignation and anger, like, why is she wasting this? And they even came out and said, hey, this could have been given to the poor. This was like a yeah. year's, year's yeah. Uh, wages. And mm. Jesus is like, no, y'all y'all need it. She did the best. She did the honorable thing because you're looking at this valuable substance that could have been used for something else of importance in your design. But unto me, it's valuable because it's honor. And so it had me pause like, in the kingdom and it's not it's not wasteful but unto god when you're honoring the right thing when you put in priority what might seem like a waste or it's not used properly is actually given over unto him as uh not only worship but seeing him as priority because like you said that was a year's worth of wages and the natural side would have been like oh i could have gave that i could have gave that away to the poor who need it where jesus didn't need it but she did it in honor and so she prioritized him with what was valuable when it yes. could have easily, like she could have took that box and said, wait a minute, well, Jesus, uh, you're special, but to honor you, I'm going to sell this and give it to the poor. And that would make sense as practical. But for her to pour it on Jesus on one person, a year's worth of wages on one person showed a level of value. And I'm like, oh, my I goodness. So it, it kind of clicked for me for the first time. Like, how many times have I tried to save something or do something that made sense. And in turn, God's like, nah, I do it over here. I need it in yes. honor. Like you do it this way, it shows oh, value yeah. unto me. It shows your value. There's times where God's prompted me to do something. I'm like, oh God, that's kind of wasteful. He's like, no, I want you to do it this way. And so oh, trust in him. And I don't, uh, the people yes. who are on the other side with stewardship, we get that. I understand that. I'm not being wasteful, beautiful lady. I know this. You're, I'm not going to just throw money out the window. She's going, you know. That's balance, but understanding it, doing it in, in, in honor and that part of priority is critical. So I'm starting to see different aspects. Like we were talking about the little details of how yeah. priority plays out in multiple mm -hmm. areas. So just yeah. the outlook of how we see what's valuable in contrast to what God calls valuable. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry. I went, I went off. Like I'm, I'm connecting these dots. Sorry. Right. Sorry. Right. <laughs> so right. They coming together. So in it, um, Priority is critical. So I'm going I'm to jump through a few of the uh, lesson points, but I'm going to sit on the ones I think more than anything on the Wednesdays because we, we I think last time we talked, we were talk, talking about Sundays in detail, but the Wednesdays had some rich, rich conversation. So um, first week when we talked about pro priority, we talked about um, the widow and Elijah, right? So she was like, uh, I'm about to die. My son going to die but you asked me to give unto you first, I'll give it unto you. And in her doing that, she has sustenance for the rest of the time throughout the drought, right? Mm -hmm. Second week, we talked about relationship. Can anybody think about how priority and relationship looks in conjunction with God? So this woman put God first the first week, but the second week's focus was relationship. Can you look at a time where you prioritize God above other relationships in your life even valuable ones because we know jesus said hey you got to hate your mom dad brother sister kids if you're gonna rock with me have you ever put god above somebody that was extremely close to you do we have an example here oh we got people smiling like you <laughs> is anybody um uh, i can just remember um this wasn't that long ago. Actually, it was one of the most difficult things that I had gone through in a relationship. And it was an instruction that God had given me. And in this instruction, obeying this instruction, God wasn't giving me, he wouldn't reveal unto me what the outcome would be. And this instruction had the potential to sever a relationship, one of the closest relationships that I had. Um, but with God's lack of instruction, I was really hesitant about doing it, about obeying the instruction. And mm -hmm. what God said was, he said, and this is like one of the, oh man, this was just, this will be with me forever. He said, you don't have to do it. I'm giving you the option to do it or not to do it. But just know that if you don't do it, 
I won't be with you in anything else you do. Oh. Hallelujah. Although you don't know, although you don't know what the outcome will be from you obeying my instruction, the instruction that you have to obey has to deal with worshiping me in spirit and in mm. truth. You got the spirit, son. Now we need you. Mm. I need you to worship in truth because the father mm. seeks such to worship him. But not mm. knowing the outcome of obeying his instruction for what he was asking me to do, it was so difficult. But when God said to me, you don't have to do it, but if you don't, I won't be with you in anything else you do. Right That's then, priority. I had to prioritize God over even this relationship. I said, you know what, God? Even if this relationship gets severed, I want you. So I chose to obey and went after God. And lo and behold, he uh, worked out the relationship too. But that was, that was one of the biggest moments I can remember where I really had to like prioritize God. And just... I'm so thankful that in his grace, he actually gave me all of those details. Like, mm -hmm. you know what? I'm going to let you know that if you don't do it, we're done. Well, I mean, all right. So wow. I didn't even see that aspect. So the example for the relationship week that we looked at was uh, Samuel and Eli, right? Because Samuel or Eli is the one that told Samuel how to hear God. And the first yeah. time he hears from God, God gives him a judgment on Eli, which was the second time. But like, think about it. the first time you hear from God, God gives you a negative report about the person who taught you how to hear him. And so the hey. next day, Eli, hey, what God say? And Samuel, like, uh, I mean, you know, he a young man, like, uh, we good. You know, God was like, he's probably hesitant because what he had to deliver was the judgment that God said. Yes. But he had, to, he had to give it. Like, am I going to honor God or am I going to honor the person who taught me how to hear God. And so him being able to release what God said, he chose God. But yes. in your example, you're actually, that's what happened with Moses. Mm -hmm. Remember when God was like, hey, um, I'm going to send an angel with you into the promised land. And Moses was like, hey, God, are you going to be there? And God was like, nah, I ain't, I'm sick of y'all. And he's like, I ain't, I ain't going. And then Moses was like, well, if you ain't there, I don't want to go. So that choosing that relationship over whatever the outcome, that's what it looks like. Man, yes. all right, nobody else can share on that point because that's too cold right there. That was like, that was like a, that's the perfect example. That's the example. <laughs> that's the one. That's the one where seeking God above whatever outcome, whatever want, when we're able to tangibly say, God, I want you above everything else. That's a, that's a King David when God said, hey, you acted up. Here's the three judgments that's going to happen. You pick one. He's like, well, I want the one that you're going with. Whatever one you in, God, that's I mm -hmm. messed up. I'm going with your punishment. That that was like, that solidified Hallelujah. who he was turned towards. So, Hallelujah. man, what ready Hallelujah. for that. So God Hallelujah. gave you a Moses opp opportunity, sir. Uh, yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. So Hallelujah. this also, this also yeah. puts in perspective, like, Everybody doesn't get that option in God unless you're close enough. God's not going to do it for somebody who's fresh in. You have to mature in God. You have to have regular uh, uh, experiences of following him. Jesus said, if you're my friend, do my commandments. Follow what I'm telling you to do. A relationship in God gets increased by constant revisiting and uh, handling of God matters. So you'll get to that point where that intimacy where God's like, all right, you know what? I can trust you. So what you got to say on this matter? Like God's interested in engaging yes, you in the decision. Yes, yes, yes. Even though he knows the oh, outcome, yeah. even though he knows what you're going to choose, there's something about him like allowing us into that. It's like with our kids, like you ever had like set up something for them? Like they had options, you know, which one mm. they're going to pick, but you like, hey, let me just throw it out there just to see what they're going to say or let them feel like they have a part in this. And so that's, yeah. that's what it looks like in that maturing side. So, hey, man, we see you, Maisha. What's up, Alabama? Um, so, yeah, we get to uh, partner with God. That is, man. Hallelujah. Uh, we, we, hey, nobody else get to share on that point. That's, that's, that was tackled. So I'm trying to cross these off because I'm trying to get through these. But that was an awesome example of what it looks like choosing a relationship. All right. So we already talked about uh, 
The following week on that Sunday, we talked about his will versus wants versus our wants. Our example was Hosea. Um, and if you've never read Hosea, go read it because that man gave God his his marriage, what he looked like yes. a mate. He gave God yes. the names of his children. He gave God his reputation. I mean, somebody could have quickly thrown out, uh, what about being unequally yoked there, Hosea? I don't think you're following. Like, they could have thrown all that at him, but he followed God even to the point where he bought his wife back. He had to buy his wife back. Oh, crazy. Now, you know what that conversation in the car would have been like? Hey, I'm saying driving back like, uh, one, you know you was out there. And two, I just used all the Costco money to get you back in the house. Oh, <laughs> We're going to have to have oh, some Jesus. conversations here. Like there's all of that. There's so much that took place, but he was willing to give God what we truly go after to say that makes us successful yes. or fulfilled. He gave God yes. what happiness in marriage looks like because he went at God told him to get a harlot. He got a harlot. God said, name your kid. Uh, I'm not with you. Like there were so many things that took place, but in it, he honored God. He prioritized God. So Hallelujah. that was uh, week four. And then we came into prioritizing loving like Jesus. So that week, we were talking about the importance of engaging life in others like Jesus does. So uh, we all should have a ripeness of this because loving like Jesus should be consistent. I need an example of where you prioritize. You made an effort to love somebody like, like you intentionally love somebody like Jesus. I'm not going to put anybody on blast because I don't want Christy to be uncomfortable, but I'm pretty sure she has a testimony about loving like Jesus in the last couple of weeks. <laughs> like, Take away. Like, mm -hmm. inten like intentional going to love like Jesus. Phoenix, like going with the intent of loving. Really? Really? No comment. Oh. I was trying. I was trying to. I was, I, I, she, oh, Chrissy is a processor. I will say that she lets it. She lets it settle in. Um, but not nah, going before like the intention, right? Going in and seeking out to love somebody um, above what you will ordinarily do, and make it a priority. Yes. If yes. anybody have an example of that, where you you went in with the aim to do that, like I'm going to go above and beyond and love like Jesus. Anybody have an example of that? And our verse reference was uh, 1 Corinthians 13. Two votes? Oh. I'm not. Uh, nah, I'm not going to say nothing because it's too, like, it's, they probably, people is probably going to watch, so I can't, I can't speak. <laughs> it's just, it's the the you can say anonymous things. Come on. Oh, you can say, uh, I knew a person. Or somebody I have a friend. friend every day. I have a Put friend. Like that. There's a, there's a person. Friend. <laughs> the the example nah, that comes to I'm mind intrigued. uh okay. for me is and i think i've already shared this but um one of my daughters was upset about something and um and here's this seven-year-old i told i said okay go to your room and she screams at me i mean just you know not just like frustration but like frowny face you know like oh, i'm angry at you and i was like mm, child you need to go to your room <laughs> and I'm going to count to 10 before I come to the room to talk to you but I was like you know what I'm going in with the opposite spirit you know mm. Jesus the thing is it's like you think right every every confrontation with demons that Jesus had was demons screaming and writhing ah, I'm a demon ah. and Jesus is like shut up mm. I'm out mm. I'm evil person and and you know I'm sure that you know it was probably as blank and as like untheatrical as he could possibly be because that was the contrast it's like he's the prince of peace yes the lord of lords he's like i don't have to raise volumes with you come on right and so so i walked into my daughter's room and i'm like mm. all right come here and i waited because i was like i'm not gonna say it again i'm just gonna wait for her to come here and i got down to her level and i was like oh. what are you yelling at me you know you're frustrated let's talk about yeah. that and i said look Here's the reason I sent you to your room. You need to calm down. It's five minutes, calm down. You can come out and you'll be fine. Mm. And, and her response was, okay, dad. Mm. 
turned around, sat on her bed, lay down, end of it. And I was just like, you know what? First of all, it's, it's, it's his love, but it's also his power and authority through his love because his love doesn't need to be broadcast or, or, or theatrical or loud. You know, it's just like, I love you. I'm not going to meet you in the same volume and intensity that you've met me. And yet it'll be more intense because it's from a place of gentleness and peace. It's kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. All right. See, see, like see? I, I just want I just want people in the virtual world, digital world, knowing that I'm not setting up any of these uh testimonies or examples. It just comes from us modeling and living it out. Um, mm -hmm. there's so many aspects of just that dimension of where uh you came down to the level of I'm not trying to say you well your daughter's younger than you like you came down to her level mm -hmm. to bring the love down in a tangible peaceful way Ooh, yeah about, see it that I'm way that's about, good mm -hmm. I'm thinking about when Jesus stooped down and Hallelujah. Actually, first off when Jesus mm -hmm. stepped into the natural Jesus. like Come that on. that exhibit of love like he could have God could have rewired his system to where his son didn't have to actually go to the cross. Like God could have snapped his finger. He could have spoke the word and sin eradicated, adversary gone, death gone, right? God can spoke that, but in his love, he engages us where we are and it's more meaningful. Like we serve a God, like out of all the other gods that people serve on earth, the other religions, our God actually stepped out of eternity to engage life like us. So if that's not loving like Jesus, I don't know what it is. So you, instead of using that uh, uh, authoritative, I'm the parent approach, you brought it down to a place to where she could receive it. And so I'm thinking about like when Jesus stooped down in the sand and he wrote when the accusation came. Yes. I'm thinking about when Jesus sat yes. with Peter like, hey, Peter, do you love me? And if you look at the scripture breakdown of the words, Peter's love was... Uh, Hallelujah. Uh, so Jesus like, Peter, do you love me? Do you a God babe? Do you love me? And Peter's comeback like, yeah, God, I love you. Like it was like, I love you like a homeboy type stuff. He he said it twice. And then the third time, Jesus is like, all right, let me break it down to where you are. Peter, do you phileo me? Like he he gave it to him to a place to where he can ultimately kind of receive it. And so that's what Jesus does. That's what he does for each of us. He brings the love down to where it registers with us wherever we are and it has to be practiced because sometimes we think that uh loving or in, in engaging someone from where we are because we have so much experience of god it can go over the head of somebody whose definition of love looks different um mm -hmm. i worked with troubled teens in the past and their yeah. definition of love is crazy mm -hmm. like like mm -hmm. uh, actually i shouldn't say crazy their definition of love is skewed because of their life and so trying to give them true pure love they, they get scared of it like there's a uh there's an understanding what is it's called uh comfort and chaos and um and sometimes when people have trauma so much that when they get to a place of peace or a place of calm like if you took a kid from a, a crazy home environment and put them in a foster home and a foster home was like loving and nurturing <laughs> Sometimes that child will create chaos because they're used to it. So when yeah. they're getting genuine, pure love, it's like, wait a minute, I don't, this, this don't feel right. This ain't real. Yeah. And so they intentionally act up sometimes because that's what they know love to look like when they get yelled at or where they get a punishment or when they take away something. So for them, that's what it looks like. So God knows what kind of love we have and how tainted it is from our experiences, from the hurts. And God's like, cool, you know what? I'm going to meet you there. I'm going to yes. come down to where you are. So you modeling that with your daughter, man, that Hallelujah. is, that is, it, that took intention because you had to stop and pause. Like, did she just scream at me? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> First like, reaction is like, no, they didn't do that. <laughs> you know what? I got another one that looks just like her. We're going to be good if she go. <laughs> like, Yo, mind well, your mind. Your sister's go. always wanted that room to herself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, your brain start wearing the, con the pros. Like, man, you know what? Three is not so bad. Like, uh, you start looking at those things, but you had to actually step outside of your natural and make it an intentional play. Let me love her a different kind of way. So, uh, shouts out to all parents out there who's still beating their kids senseless. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mark just modeled. That's what it looks like. 
You can love a child or coworker or family member from a place where it looks like you're taking a hit, but for them, they see it as a different register. And so that is an awesome, awesome example. Uh, man, I kind of, I want to open the floor, but y'all keep giving me these hitters where it's like nobody Good else example. can jump in. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Um, the, uh, a couple weeks ago, my mom came down with my brother and um, my brother had been acting up. So, um, whoa, anonymous, anonymous. Sorry. <laughs> 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 God gets the glory anyway. Um, <laughs> anywho, it got me really upset. <laughs> it got me really upset. And so, um, you messed me up, Layla. <laughs> Sorry, my daughter's right here. Um, it got me really upset. So I had to pray. <clears throat> and so, um, when he came in, he came into my home and um, the Lord was like, fix some breakfast. I said, okay. <laughs> I didn't want to do anything. Uh, of I course, was, I can tell by the way he said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but God is awesome because I've always said, I, that's like, I've always said, I want to love like Jesus love. Like that has always been my number one thing. And so, um, and he had, yeah, anywho, the Lord said fix and brush, so I did. So they went out to do whatever they was gonna handle um, while they came, um, what they came down here for, and then came back. And he was, he asked me um, if I had a towel or and some other stuff um, because he had forgot it. And the Lord was like, and don't just give them the other towel, oh, any old towel. Give them the best you have. I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. The four Seasons towels, God, really? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, just yielding to God and he sh showing me how to love like he loved. When, mm. when we don't deserve the best, he gives us the best. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... Mm -hmm. And I just, that's what I learned from that. Even though my, he was acting the way he had acted, um, in the end, it, the love of Christ that was shown through me, uh -huh. was, he saw it. And, um, and he, he got to, in the end, he got to do what his agenda was anyway, because Christ loved him that much which was he wanted to see his son, but you know, God used me to love on him, even though I, I, I love him. I just didn't want to do, you know, the top notch stuff because he had been acting up. <laughs> well, you side, well, you sideline like, so similar to like Mark, and I'm not trying to say your brother's under you or anything, but you, you sideline your emotions, what you felt he deserved, what you didn't feel like doing. So not only did you prioritize God, but you also put that love above, right? So where you're making him breakfast where he don't deserve it, or he probably should get like a, uh, you know what I'm saying, a verbal a verbal uh, come down. Or when God's saying, hey, take it a step further, give him a good time. Like those little actions that we do and we consider them small, sometimes they crack through things. And God does that with us. Like it could be a word at the right time. Like, I mean, how many of us was in the middle of some mess? of a lifestyle or exactly actions. and that's when god came in with his he didn't come in saying oh you messing up you're gonna die and burn no he came in gently like hey i love you and in yes. a moment of clarity you got pulled out of your lifestyle because he gently yes. came in mm. i mean mm. the woman with because the issue, i mean the woman who was caught in the fair and that when he's writing in the sand like god could have easily been like hey you know i saved your butt right you know mm. you could have been stoned yeah. you should have been sleeping around <laughs> like he he gently addressed what she was in and right. love, and it was just, hey, just don't, don't go send no more. Yeah, like, he didn't come down Jesus. on her. He, he allowed his love, his action of love to resonate greater. And that's why we're reading about what he's done. So bravo, Mark Janika, that's what it looks like when you're intentionally responding to God and you're loving like him, we get the outcome that heaven's pleased with. Because you probably could have went back and forth with your, your brother or Mark, you could have came down on your daughter and it might've been a long drawn out evening of 
y'all both at odds or your brother might not have been talking to you, but you engaging it from God's perspective and making that a focus, an emphasis, you had to have an outcome. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Look, at look at these warriors out here, folks. And if you out there in the world, uh, uh, virtual, if you got something that God's been showing you that you, yes. you're living out in priority, add it in the comments. We always love testimonies. It's always wonderful. Um, to be able to model God and see what God's doing because those are two different aspects. We got a daughter, we got a brother, somebody they got to love like Jesus at the workforce. Somebody they got to love like Jesus yes. at the grocery store. Yes. Some of us got love like Jesus, you know what I'm saying, when we go on a family reunion. You know what I'm saying, all of that. You got to you gotta have an intent. The next time you know you're going to get around family on Thanksgiving, you will be like, love like Jesus, love like Jesus. Okay, get your momentum up to run in there and just Hallelujah. sling out love Hallelujah. the way that God designs it. Hallelujah. And you yes. can have a greater outcome than you being confrontational Hallelujah. or off-putting. So, amen. Wait, is that good? No? You laugh like you had something to add. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, man, I don't think we're going to get through all these, but... Oh, is that her? Oh, look. <laughs> See? Your dad been loving you like Jesus. Say amen. <laughs> I can't tell what part of that. <laughs> This this isn't the one that yelled at me. She's oh she's yeah okay okay all right all right. Either way, you sure I'm still get love like Jesus. You know what I'm saying, yeah. um, amen. And so, you know one, uh, of the things, one of the things about that point is it takes us it takes um it takes us constantly remembering what God has done for us. Yes. Constantly remembering the grace that He's extended to us, the yes. patience that He's shown yeah. us, and yeah. in that that. When we when we don't forget to remember, that's part of the fuel that helps enable us. Remembering what God has done for us, that's what allows me to um, go on to love somebody the way he's loved me. That's why that unmerciful servant story is so shocking. Because the dude just got forgiven like five minutes earlier. Yes. And he's just like, pay me what you owe me. You're going to jail. <laughs> You gotta pay me back right now. And he just got forgiven like a billion dollars. Yeah. It's just like yeah. all right. So you, you just got forgiven, dude. Y'all just gave us an all right. So technique wise or uh, approach, one of the ways we can prioritize God is remembering. Remembering yeah. what he's done for us. So if we can remember what he's done for us, mm -hmm. the grace that is extended on us, it it puts him in a rightful place whether it's yes. our interaction with him or our interaction with others. So being mindful, remembering, looking at the monuments. I tell this to people often. If you don't write down God's victories in your life, start. Because in it, you can go back and be reminded when the next one comes or when you're engaging somebody who's difficult. You can be reminded of what God's done for you and how you, oh, look at, my. I see my, she said mirrors and windows. You see your reflection and he sees mm -hmm. your possibilities. Yes. Hallelujah. As we're prioritizing uh, God, look at you dropping nuggets from across the country. I see you <laughs> lifeline Alabama uh, uh, connect, but no, nah, it, it's true. She's right. Like there's aspects of us that we'll see greater when we put him in his rightful place in our lives. And then we start to see our, our characteristics that exude him, that mirror him as we walk it out. So be reminded, be reminded. That's how we're loving like Jesus. And that's how we're keeping them on the top of our relationship. All right. So, man, I don't, all right. I'm trying to hop around. I'm trying to get all these in. I'm excited, though, because y'all giving us fresh testimonies. And uh, hey, hey, so we guys. talked about, uh, I'm going to just, we talked about uh, perfecting process, how God uses what we go through. We need to make that a priority to see what he's doing. And then we talked about obedience <laughs> over jeopardy. We had yeah. to prioritize our obedience to God over the jeopardy of what will happen from following him. Yeah, yeah. And we're in America, we're privileged. We have first world problems where, oh, I changed churches, so now I got to drive 20 minutes away from my home. You got other places where you whisper the name Jesus, somebody might come in your house at night. You smuggle in a Bible and all you read is one page and you're jailed. Like we're at a place where our jeopardy for our faith and putting God first looks way different than other countries. Yes. Not trying to belittle yes. what we go through, but for some of us, it can be a uh, life or death, spiritually, yes. um, relationally, occup occupationally. All of this could put it in jeopardy if you're following God. So um, when we're looking at this, 
we were looking at um, in Acts where um, Peter's in, I forgot where he was at the time, but he had a prophet who came in and basically prophet had a sign that he took Peter's belt and tied his arms and his legs up. And he said, the person who owns this belt is going to be bound soon. And that was Paul who was going wow. to be captured by um, the Roman government and he's going to be locked up. And so everybody else is like, oh, Paul, you need to get out of here because they're going to get you. And Paul's like, nah, that's not what the Holy Spirit's telling me. I know what's going to happen and I'm still going to go through with it because this is what God wants. He's just giving me a heads up of what's going to happen. And so Paul didn't use that as like a sign. Like, oh, wait a minute. God, are you telling me I need to flee the land? No, he still stayed true to his assignment. So he looked at the obedience over what could happen to him as a jeopardy. And that's what fueled his outcome. So for any of us, have we ever been in a place where there's something that's in jeopardy from us following God? Whether it's a uh, possession, relationship, job, uh, status. Well, God said, uh, he said we live in the world, but we're not of the world. So it's like every everything I do, I'm not going to speak on, on the details because every day is like a training for me. It's like a training ground for me. But everything I do, it feels like there's a resistance. And it reminds me of uh, Mark's uh his his message on Sunday. So anybody out there, you need to go watch that because the the the, the vacation setting of a Christian walk and make, making it seem like it's all good and all skipping through roses, you're skipping the big part. So you're saying like as you're walking, there's things that are in the um there's things that hang in the balance from your obedience with God. Yes. Yeah. And oh, has that definitely. has there ever been one to where you had to choose like God if I do this, I'm gonna lose. If I follow what you're saying, I'm gonna lose this. Have you ever been in that juncture in your walk? Just uh, just looking crazy in front of people. Just ah. you know, just like some so Come simple. On. I'm be Come simple on. with it. Just worshiping. You know, ah, yeah. I got I got I had people laughing at me like, what is he, he doing too much? What, what is he doing? But it's like, eh. Like you don't know what me and God been through. You don't know what He's saying. Wow. So I'm not really worried about what wow. you're talking about. Wow, let's go. And I'm gonna keep go. on worshiping. I'm gonna keep on worshiping. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Period. Hallelujah. Hey. So so in that in that in that right there, right? For and we're we're talking about this on the mountain. There's something about where worship in American culture for men um is viewed as I'm not gonna say feminine, but like like so, like it makes you less of a man to worship, right? And there's there's aspects where I mean I've been there where as Lamar has his hands straight up, my my season of hallelujah God, like my hands would be yeah. like no higher than my shoulder. Because if they go higher than my shoulder, I'm doing too much. But if I'm watching a, a movie or a game, oh, like my hands is all yeah. over the place. And yeah. it came to a point where one of the pastors I was under, he's like, if an officer put his gun at you, or an officer not even put his gun at you, the officer officer said, put your hands in the air, you're gonna put them straight up. You're not going to have yeah. them sort of because you don't want them to question where whether you're following them or not. He's like, right. can you do the same thing for Jesus? Mm. And from that day, I was like, wait a minute. Mm. Can I, am I going to stretch my hands as far as possible? And I did. And as oh, I started yeah. doing that, it makes you look vulnerable. It makes you look like less. I mean, because you're you're being less. I mean, there's a place of worship where you can't be completely, yeah, you know, so I'm worshiping for Jesus, yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, unless you got dude, uh, unless you do from uh, Central Valley, Jesus Christ, by him, different, <laughs> different story. If you have, but now, nah, yeah, love you, Lord. Hey, I was just, just watching the video it. yesterday. Um, but now, nah, there's a place where you have to, you have to step into vulnerability in God. I literally had somebody say, um, they said, yeah, God, God won't have you looking foolish. And I went, uh, that's that's not right because God's had me looking stupid a lot of times <laughs> if you go back to scripture God had like think about Elijah when he called for the uh, drought and then when he was supposed to call it back in three years he had to pray seven times you can imagine that first prayer was like oh God it's time all right in the name of the God who serves <laughs> over Israel all right let the let the part clouds come let the rain come and no Okay, all right, back down, back down. All right, God, I got you. We, God, I know we're here. We just had this wonderful experience on the Mount Carmel. We showed them prophets who real, real. You real, real. Come down with that rain now. No, all right, hold on, y'all, hold on. 
And he did that seven times. Come on. Seven Come times. On. Come, Come on. on. By the third one, probably like, man, this dude don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, I don't even yeah. think he caught. Like, there's you have those murmurs in the background. And then by the fourth time, he might have been thinking, well, did I even hear God? Am I supposed to call for the draw at the end? Is this Ooh. what is this the time I'm if on. I hear correctly? Yeah. I'm on. Oh man, I'm I don't right. know if I'm right. That's okay. when the adversary's playground come in, like you look stupid right now. Nobody's exactly. listening to you. Like all those points come in. So us being able to put God above what can be the outcome of what people can say is critical. Oh, yeah. Worship is one of them. Your life choices is another. I've had people looking at us like, are you having another child? Yeah, God said, for real? Mm. In California? Like, yeah. <laughs> God, like, it's what God called for. And really? sometimes they have you looking crazy. Hey, that's... But in God, we know what he assigns. Is, is, it looks crazy in the beginning, but when it comes yeah. to fullness, that's what faith looks like when it takes place. Yes. So, amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So Come on. I appreciate your example in worship. If you've okay. never been to that place in worship because you're fearful of what people will say, prioritize God and let him establish your greater worship. We've seen that yeah. on the mountain. We see that in Lifeline all the time. People's voices get to a level we've never heard before. People's flagging goes off the Richter. Uh, Fahima being one of them. When she goes in, I'm like, oh, wow, look at the extension of her arms. Like, that is worship. Like, man, let me see if I can get that. Like, it's an example. It gives me something to stretch for because it's possible because it's genuine under God. I don't care how I look. I don't care what reputation. I will cry. I will. I will let whatever. I, and I'm an ugly crier. If it's unto God, it's gonna happen because it's unto Him. So yeah, stepping out of that, what we're in jeopardy of. And like I said, thankfully we're not at a place where death is knocking on our door when we decide Jesus. But for some of us, it may be. Mark is done. Um, he's done missionary work in other countries, in other continents. You might have to go somewhere where you're trying to share the gospel and God to say, hey. Somebody's going to try and kill you before the end of the night. Are you going to buckle and be like, nah, you know what, well, God, this ain't the assignment for me. Give me the one that's PG-13. Now, we have Come to on. be able to prioritize PG them above that and be able to walk in it. Uh, oh, my issue, worship is the toughest thing a Christian can do, and those who don't know him will under never understand. Relationship with him is a struggle, but worth mm. it. Yes. That's what Mark was talking about on Sunday. Are we going to struggle? Are we going to submit? Are we going to contend or are we going to let go? Oh, Putting God in priority, we will struggle. We will fight. Oh, we will be obedient over oh, what can happen to us. Jesus was so submissive to his father's will that he went to the cross, the most excruciating moment of his life or any human's life, taking the weight of sin out of obedience over what he felt. And people think it's a cheat code because he was God. He was still flesh, 100% yeah. flesh. 100% God. So it wasn't like he had an easy ride. He still had a decision to make. So in that, we have to apply God on what he did in the garden and on the cross. All right. Um, man. All yes. Right, so, Hallelujah. All right. We talk about relationship. Talk about love like Jesus. Talk about obedience. I wanted to go actually, we'll we'll, we'll do identity and we'll stop there. Because uh, if anybody didn't catch the other lessons, go back. The Wednesdays and Sundays went hard and we're getting fresh examples right now that adds to it. So I think as we're leaving this season of understanding of priority, I just want us to take away those key things that makes us greater in him, that makes us stronger in him. So we talked about after a uh, power conversion, which to talk about the things that we go through that makes us stronger. We talked about identity and in it, we talked mm. about um, first Peter's first uh, Peter two and 10. And where it's talking about us being royal priesthood. And so I, oh, you know, this is a good stopping point because I'm, I'm learning about royalty. Um, royal priesthood, right? And so uh, in our conversation, we understand that uh, in the Israel line or Judah line of kings under David was royalty, whoever was the lineage of David. So, you know, Israel and Judah split off and then Judah was a line where ultimately Jesus came from Judah, right? from the line of Judah, which was uh, David's, David's lineage, right? So you were royal if you were under David's lineage. But in the New Testament, when Peter's talking about royal priesthood, he's actually con connecting two different um, tribes of Israel because the priests 
were the only ones, uh, the ones who were assigned to be priests were Levites. Yes. So you couldn't be a priest unless you were a Levite. Yeah. And you couldn't be royalty unless you were Judah. Right. So in First Peter 2 and 10, it's speaking about us being royal priesthood, meaning that we have the royalty of Christ, the crown, the power, but also the priesthood to be able to draw in and connect with God. And so as we're looking at those two components of how we're comprised, this is what we must put at the top. This is what we must see in priority, because if we do not see the power in those two, we can belittle what God's doing. So we just talked about worship. Mm -hmm. Can somebody give me an example where God displayed to you your value, how valuable you were or are to him, to his kingdom, in purpose, in definition? Can somebody give an example of when God explained or dis displayed to you your worth to him? Yeah, no, that one's heavy. That one's heavy. Yeah, well, uh, I think the example which you you are familiar with is um, I think it was 2007 when I went to India, and um, I was of the mindset that I was there to serve the people I was with. I was kind of, you know, the support team, you know, and and uh, so we got to day five or six, and we'd gone to some villages and done, you know, evangelism, showed the Jesus film, and all this stuff. And I said, uh, okay, well, the next thing we're going to do is this um, crusades and pastor's conference. I'm like, oh, okay, well, who's coming to speak? You know, that was my mindset. Okay, someone's coming from somewhere else and we're going to meet them here and then they're going to speak and teach and, and we're just going to, you know, pray for pastors or pray for people at the altars at the crusades or whatever. And it was like, um, no, we're pretty much it. We're, we are those speakers if you have something, get it ready and share it. And I'm like, what? And, and uh, so anyway, I was like, okay, that's cool. I, I feel permission here to, to step up. I think the first thing, well, during the day, it was the pastor's conference and at night it was the crusades. And I got to preach at the crusades and I got to minister really some strong, timely words at the pastor's conference. But what the Lord showed me was, I brought you here to be the guest speaker. You wanted to sit down here at the low end of the church. You're just like, I'm not very valuable. Um, you know, I'm fresh off a divorce. I gave up my, my ordination and ministry a couple of years ago. I'm just kind of like a, you know, support member. And the Lord's like, no, no, no. You are in the wrong seat, sir. You need to come up to this seat because that's the seat I prepared for you for this place. Jesus. And, and rather than put on some kind of false humility and be like, nah, I'll just stay down here, God. I was like, all right, if that's what you're really saying, then that's where I'll go. And it was critical to the whole thing. You know, just, just letting him say, this is the value you have. This is what you're going to release. Get up there and do it. Oh, man. Hallelujah. He gave you a mission. He, he took the mission into a trip where you was just, hey, let me just play in the background. God's like, no, I called you here for the, amen. Amen. And for some of us, it, he'll, he'll, he'll guide us into that value of who we are to the kingdom and us seeing it is critical. So like, you can't go back. You can't go back to living humbly or meekly. I'm not trying to say not humbly, but you can't go back to living meekly after that exposure. God's not yeah. saying, all right, I'm going to turn you on to being valuable to me now. And let me flick the switch when you're done. No, this is not Old Testament where the anointing will come on people for a season, then leave. Yeah. We walk yeah. with his Holy Spirit. So in him, we have our identity. Yes. It's who we have our being. So now yeah. that you've been exposed, you have to live it out. You have mm -hmm. to honor the level of value that he's given you. And that's us being and prioritizing it. And it's not, it's not being prideful. And I'm also reading this in a book. Um, mm -hmm. it's speaking about the value of who we are in God, right? And so um, he said, uh, what did he say in the book? And it had me laughing when I read it. He said, sometimes uh, a religion or church overemphasizes humbleness to where it takes away the greatness that God wants in us. Oh. He said, like the word great, God refers to us as great often, but sometimes we feel like in order for us, for God to be great, we have to be less. 
And it's nothing against that prayer. You know, when people pray before they speak, like, you know, God, uh, let me be less and you be more. I mean, I get that. That comes into it. Um, yeah. But he said in the <laughs> he said in the book, he was like, you know, what really gets me when believers after they get done doing something in God and somebody comes up and compliments them like, oh, that was a wonderful song you sang or that was a wonderful message you preach. And the first thing out of their mouth, like, oh, you know, it's Jesus. Like, they, <laughs> like the first thought is to like cast light on God. Like you don't want to take that shine. But he said in doing so, us breaking ourselves down doesn't make God greater. He's like, mm. <laughs> actually in the book, he actually said, he's like, when people come back with that, like, oh, uh, you know, it's all Jesus. He says, I usually say, well, it wasn't that good. Like, don't don't act like, <laughs> like, like <laughs> if it was really Jesus, it would be great. So you have to take some, not trying to say take some of the credit, but see the value of what God sees. Yes. And for us, we think that if we see the greatness in us, it's going to push us prideful. Well, I'll say myself, if I accept the greatness that God has established in me, I think it's pride at times where God's mm. like, no, nah, I'm not concerned about that. If I'm <laughs> elevating you, I'm not concerned about you being prideful because I put you in that place. Yes. So for us, we have to be mindful of us being royalty and priesthood. Like, and that's accepting compliments. I like when they honor the king, they would bring a gift to the king from a, another nation. They go, like, oh man, that's the, oh, you that's nice. We're good. No, the king would accept it. Like, thank you for this gift of mm. honoring me and showing me who I am. So that royal priesthood is critical. Um, Kellen, I see you, sir. He said that. God showed me who, how much uh, he values me when in spite of me not deserving it, he gave me my wife. Oh, yeah. All right. I just said not to chop yourself down, but on this one, I do respect <laughs> that your wife is great in your life, sir. <laughs> no, but no. Yes, yeah. sometimes God will give us something that's a treasure to show you how valuable you are. Yeah. And I'm not... I'm not and I talk about like, oh man, I was living in an apartment and God just gave me a Lamborghini. Uh, yeah, that's that's probably the lottery. And I highly doubt that you don't have the maintenance money to take care of it. But God will show you or give you something of value to him that shows you, like even the download sometimes. When God gives you a dream or a vision, yeah. sometimes him giving that to you shows you how valuable you are to even hold the weight of it. I mean, mm -hmm. look at Joseph. He's able to interpret dreams while he's in jail. So even though he doesn't look like he's valuable, he had more weight than all the people in the king's courts who couldn't answer what the dream meant. And so yeah. for him, he had that value in there. Did you have a point, Janika? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to cut in, so I raised my hand. <laughs> um. I, I was just uh, talking to the kids the other day. Uh, what ran through that's this is what ran through my mind um, when you said about valuable. Um, how many times the Lord has saved my life from death door, um, coming from my mom's womb. The the enemy tried to kill me, and just I start telling testifying, telling the kids how many times I died or could have died, and then one time I actually died like. That showed me how valuable I am in Christ. Uh, that when the enemy, you know, tries to cut you off early. Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah, well, that's yeah. and in that exhort everything that God shows you, every positive, every strength, every quality of Him. We need to press to make that a priority. It should be our focus to exude it, and then also as us being priests, bringing Him wherever we go. So those are components that we have to make important and that we have to walk mm -hmm. in. I would say I'm, I'm, I'm speaking for myself to where living out royalty and the royal priesthood, that, that side takes effort because for me, it's easier to, to rest in that place of humble because it's safer. To be yes. humble is safer. I'm not gonna, I mean, for me, I'm not gonna say for everybody, but for me, it's safer because I don't have to have the responsibility of walking with greatness when God's like, I need you to. Yeah. And the things that I need accomplished, you have to walk in them. So me prioritizing it and not just like retreating, like, and now it's to the point where, all right, we just, we just had a wonderful weekend and God, we prayed, we shared word, we worship God touched down. All right, let me go back into my 
humble, humble corner with my humble shell on because it's nice and warm in here. Oh, I really, God, I pushed for you that weekend. I was, yay, no, nah, <laughs> I have to stay there. I have to walk in it. Hey, that, listen, that's my shell. That's my, that's my Quick, shell. Quick, quick, quick. <laughs> Oh, I'm Michelle. It is Michelle. <laughs> Mark. So, so as we were talking about this issue, I think this is this is where the spirit of wisdom and discernment comes in. There's being built up, and there's being puffed up. Mm. Ah, come on. I'm just gonna let that simmer. That's that's where you let that 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 silence right. sit. Yeah, so right. built up, the Lord, the Lord talks about building ourselves up, building one another up, him building us up, and being puffed up, which always has to do with pride or, you know, superior knowledge or just an attitude of superiority. You know, humility isn't superiority where we're puffed up and like, man, look how, look how much we know. Look how many gifts we walk in. Look at that church. They only walk in like the gift of, of like serving, you know, but man, look at all the <laughs> gifts we got, you know, and it's just like, whoa, you know, but it's like, look how many people they're reaching with the way that they put their effort into that one gift Amen. you put on a show they're saving souls Amen. so it's like it's like you know the lord may have Come to tear on. you down to build you back Ooh. up again because it's like Ooh. yeah you know Ooh. i like what i see there i don't like what i'm hearing from you there so you know Ooh. let me let me tear you down build you back up and get rid of this puff up mm. well, and, and i think we were talking about i think we were talking about that during that week when we're talking about royalty and priesthood, like when you're living that royalty, you don't need to convince others. You don't need to be puffed up because it's who you are. Like Jesus did not need the co-signing of men to establish who he was. Half the time he was telling people, Shh, don't tell them who did this because I'm, I'm completely secure in who I am. Matter of fact, demons, shut your mouth. Don't let the people know what you know, because in the spirit, you know. I'm going to exude who I am regardless. Yeah. And so you don't need validation externally. So and it, it is, and I will say for some people, it's it's a growing process, me included, like to come into the kingdom, like, yeah, I'm royal. You have to break a mind state of, of yeah. servanthood or yes. a mind state of poverty outlook. Yes. It takes you to, that has to be snapped off. Like think about the Israelites when they came out of 400 years of slavery and God saying, I got you. You went from being slaves to being a choice nation. It didn't happen overnight. And that's why God said, I'm going to leave the inhabitants of Canaan there because you need to learn how to war, fight. You need to learn to see the value of how I see you. And it's not going to come from just a flick of a switch. You know what that looks like? When people win the lottery, when people win the lottery, they don't change their behaviors. They just mm -hmm. got, uh, quote unquote, lucky. But what tends to happen, if you look at the numbers, statistics show that the majority of people who win the lottery end up going bankrupt because mentally they yeah. haven't changed. They've got a valuable yes. thing, but yes. internally nothing shifted. So in no, God, when he's establishing the greater that we are, he'll walk you through the process to equip you with the understanding. So Joseph had to go through it. Moses went through it. Like to have that, that encoding of who we are is critical for us to carry it out and we must make it priority. So I just want to, I want to encourage anybody. At the same time, I want to emphasize the importance. When God starts to establish your value to him, live it out. Hallelujah. Practice it. Hallelujah. it. Rehearse Hallelujah. it in the mirror. Pray the prayers that he's saying. That's why being royal priesthood, 1 Peter 2 and 10, is critical. We must be able to embody. Jesus heard right from the gate when he was baptized who he was. My son, well, please, I love him. And he's off into the races. He immediately stepped into ministry and he lived it out completely and thoroughly Hallelujah. right from the jump. And so that's Hallelujah. what we're all for. And I want to end with Maisha's. Uh, he gave me an opportunity to use the gift of deliverance and trusted me with someone else's process. Man, man. So God can trust you with an assignment. It's like, woo, knock it out of the park. Yes. Try your best to make it 100%. Make it a touchdown. Make it whatever you can. Because not only do you want to please God, it increases your opportunity to be mature in your royalty in him, in your priesthood in him, and letting the spirit flow. It's all practice, and we must make it priority. We can't just, oh, that was nice, and if it happens again, no, we need to be looking for those next engagements. So uh, I'm going to stop there because oh, we have so many more. 
I will I will encourage or I'll urge anybody who didn't watch the following weeks go back um to like the beginning of August. That's where our uh, priority series started. And man, we touched on so many aspects. And just tonight, y'all gave me fresh examples. Now, even though my kids are welling out downstairs, I'm about to go down and love. I'm not hurting anybody. I'm like, hey, <laughs> you're banging and screaming while we're on the live stream. But you know what? Come have a cookie because God loves you. I love you. Like, it's going to be a different conversation. No Our cookies. Kika, all right, no cookies. All right, because yeah, jump, jump, going to be crazy. But Don't no, it's, it's, uh, it's being intentional. Like, I'm, I'm setting my mind to... Let me love like Jesus. Yes. Let me honor him. Let me do what he, let me remember what he did for me. That's priority. Let me remember what he did for me so I can be that to others. Let yes. me keep my relationship with him first above all else. All of these things. Let me shift my mind, even though I know there's something attached to it and whatever jeopardy. It can make me look foolish as a parent. It can make me look like a bad parent. And for anybody who's ever followed God's instructions and somebody on the other side, like, that's not what we used to do. Ignore it. That's what God told you to do for your kid. Follow his instruction. I mm -hmm. had those looks too. We both had those looks. I did it with Chris the other week. I was like, what you doing? She's like, God told me to. I'm like, you were like, <laughs> in God, she followed God and the outcome that happened. I'm like, oh, oh, that was way better than me trying to throw something at him. Good job, pretty lady. <laughs> Break yourself. <laughs> but yes. Um, so uh, this this has been a, a powerful two, two months, man. This priority series, like it's all folded into what was needed. And even on the mountain, we're talking about the prioritizing, performing, and pleasing God. All of it rolled together. So I pray that we all step into that understanding and we carry it moving forward because it's, in, it's, it's, it's intentional. We have to be intentional and put God in his rightful place. Amen? Amen. 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 Um, can you close us out in prayer, Brother A.G.? Can you seal this priority uh, yeah. understanding? And also the struggling portion and also struggling and not submitting and welcome to the struggle, all of that. That goes with the priority of us as being believers. Can you feel our understanding and prayer, sir? Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this time, God. Um, we thank you for the opportunity, God. Hallelujah. For you to speak on this subject, for you to shine the light of your word, Lord God, in our hearts, that we may see the importance that we may see the beauty, that we may see the joy, that we may see the power yes. in making you our priority, God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Everybody yes, watching, yes, everybody yes, on yes. the stream, everybody's watching, anybody who would watch this back in later weeks, oh God, do a work in our heart, oh God. Hallelujah. That we Hallelujah. have no choice but to see our value in you to see your value towards us and to make you the priority to make bringing jesus the reward of his suffering the priority of our lives to make giving god glory living our lives unto him we live in him we live move and have our being we serve at the pleasure of our king. So Father, we do not take it lightly, oh God. We are very humble and we are very, we are in a state of awe, oh God, that you would choose to fill us with your spirit and in return, live your life through us, Lord God. That yeah. you, would clean, you would clean up the vessels that are our lives. And yes, you would Jesus. Yes, you inhabit Jesus. them, oh God, because you see them as oh, valuable, yes, God. Yes. You would use us as an opportunity to yes, get Jesus. glory in the earth. Yes, so as Jesus. long as there is breath in our bodies, we will make it our lives mission, oh God. Hallelujah. To prioritize yes, you in yes, everything Jesus. we do. And in yes, that, Jesus. we shall walk in the power of the spirit. Hallelujah. To live our lives yes. according to your will. We mm -hmm. thank Father in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 Let's go. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Sorry. Let's go. Hallelujah. So, um, Hallelujah. It's been a wonderful Hallelujah. time. Thank you for joining us virtually. Lifeline, as always, we have uh, a joy with the word and, and matching it up with our experience. Thank you, family, for your testimonies. Thank you for those who are online who added in. Uh, yes, we appreciate everything you added to. And um, hopefully you're continuing to be blessed. So uh, Lifeline family, say peace out to everybody.
Peace. Peace. And we will talk to y'all on Sunday. <laughs> Be blessed. <laughs>